Hello learners, in this lecture, we will see what all are the different types of the loads that we need to consider on any of the structure that we are doing. Then we'll try to see how to apply these loads or how to define these loads with the help of ETAB software. Now, coming to the types of loads, we know that the first load that we have is a dead load. We call this dead load as, also, as a self weight of the self weight of any material. Let us say this guy is holding a kind of, you know, dumbbell. So this dumbbell has its own weight, right? So that is a self weight of that. Similarly, we have a live load, right? Right now I'm sitting in a room. So I'm a live load on this floor. Similarly, you people are also sitting in some other rooms, right? And so you are a live load to that particular floor, right? In the same way, the furniture is what we have kept. So even the furniture is a live load. So dead load are those loads which are stationary, right? Like for us, for example, the beam, the column, the slab, all these are the stationary load. You cannot move them. Once it is created, they're going to stay there for, till the structure fails. So they are called as dead load or you can call them as a stationary loads. In the same way, coming to the live load. So live loads are those loads which are movable, right? Right now I'm sitting in this particular floor and I'm taking a class. And let us say after end of this lecture, I'll be moving out of this room. So then the live load of this particular room has been reduced right so dead load is not a fluctuating load whereas live load is a fluctuating load it keeps on changes the magnitude and the direction of the load changes here but whereas in the dead load the magnitude and the direction doesn't change it remains there forever yeah the third kind of load that we have is a you can consider this has to be a wind load right when you go for high rise building let us say g plus 15 or g plus 20 in that case it is subjected to wind load so you have to consider the wind load as well. Now coming to the important load that is an earthquake load, right? Again, when you when your building is subjected to seismic vibrations, then again that load is experienced due to the inertia, and then we have to consider this particular earthquake load. Now coming to the snow load, right? We have a snow load as well. So when the store keep when the snow keeps on adding over the slopes, over the roof then it will add additional load to the structure. So we need to consider this load as well. Then let us say you're, you're putting up a retaining wall. This is a wall and you have a earth here. So this earth will be putting a pressure on this. So this is the earth pressure load what we have. Let us consider you're constructing a dam and on this particular dam, the water is, this is the water which is stored in the reservoir. So this is applying a force on this particular dam. So it's a water pressure load what we have. Similarly, we have a wave and a current that is in the offshore structure, we have these loads to be considered. And nowadays we have this blast load and the impact load on the buildings. And other than that, we have the thermal loads. We have these machine loads, machine vibration, the construction loads and all, right? But usually for our project, for our understanding, we'll be consider only three types of load. The first is the dead load. The second is the live load. And third load, what you can see is called as SIDL. Anyhow, it's not written in the PPT. It's called as SIDL. It stands for super, I'll write it here, super imposed dead load. So why do we say dead load and super imposed dead load? We'll try to see it in the upcoming lectures. Right? These are the three loads usually what we'll be trying to see. And we'll try to apply this load on the structure and we'll try to see those things. Other than that, we'll not be getting into the wind load. We'll not be getting into the earthquake load as of now. Any earth pressure, we are not trying to apply it for the building. And this snow load, we don't consider. So based on this, we'll try to see how things will work out. Yeah. Yeah, so we already seen this. This is how a live load and the dead load looks, right? So you can see a wall here. So this wall is a dead load, right? Similarly, this floor is staying here. The floor is a dead load. Again, this furniture is a live load. I can move this furniture and keep it in separate room, but I cannot shift the wall from here. So this furniture is a live load. It is, it's a, it can, it's a fluctuating load. I can say it can move from one room to another room. So these human beings are also the live load. So live load, sometimes we call it as imposed loads. Similarly, this furniture, the uh, book rack, what has been kept here, that is also live load, right? Yeah. Next we have certain code books that we need to follow. So these are the code books what we follow in India. The first is the Indian standard 456-2000. Uh, the specification is for plain and reinforced cement concrete. 
Then we have Indian Standard I-875 Part 1. This is for the self weight of the materials that is called as for the dead loads. We'll be using this uh, code book. Then we have Indian Standard 875 Part 2. It is called as live load. The live loads are also called as imposed loads. So this particular code book tells us what is the live load that you need to consider in the kitchen. What is the live load that you need to consider on the staircase? What is the live load that you need to consider on the corridor, on the you know garage and uh, porch area, uh, in the bathrooms and all. Then we have Indian Standard 875 Part 3 2015. We have a wind load code book. Then we have 875 Part 4 for the snow load. Then we have 875 Part 5. This is for special load and load combinations, the thermal load combinations and all. Then coming to Indian Standard 1893 2016, we have this code book for earthquake resistant structures. Then we have Indian Standard 13920 2016. This is for ductile design and detailing of RCC subjected to the seismic forces and then we have a last one we have many code books then we have another code book of indian standard 16700 2017 criteria for structural safety of tall concrete structures whenever you want to put a tall structures of g plus 15 20 25 and all then we try to refer this particular code book but for our understanding we just have to concentrate on indian standard is 456 2000 indian standard 875 part one and indian standard 875 part 2 and then we'll try to see in the standard 1893-2016 and the ductile, de uh, ductile design and detailing of RCC of Indian standard 13920. This much is enough for our understanding and then yeah coming to the load calculation. So what all kinds of load we have we already seen that one is a dead load the second is a live load right. So usually we'll try to see how the load uh, transfer happens. So this is how the load distribution happens in a structure, right? So the first, the load will be coming. That is a gravity load. That is a gravity load. It will be coming on the slab. So slab will be transferring that load to the beams. From the beam, the load will be transferring to the columns. And from the column, the load will be transferred to the footing. So we need to apply the load on the slab. So that will be the dead load and the live load. Then we need to apply the wall load on the beams. We'll try to see how that wall load is applied. So this is how a wall load is applied in terms of kilo Newton per meter, right? We'll try to see that. So these are the two loads usually what we need to apply. Then in the terrace portion, we need to apply the waterproofing load. And uh, in the toilet portion, we need to add the uh, sunk portion load. That is a sunken load is what we call. So we'll try to see how, the, how to apply all those loads. We clear all these things. So if you come here, these are the terrace garden loads, what we need to consider in the terrace portion, if you want to add them. Similarly, we'll be having a waterproofing load. Then we'll be having a water tank load. That also we need to consider. If you have a lift portion, then you have to consider the lift load as well. And then coming to the wall load and the parapet loads on the beam. This is how the wall load is applied. Let me try to zoom in. We have a beam here, right? And over this beam, you have constructed this brickwork. So this brickwork will have certain density and it will have certain height as a result of that it will be transferring the load on this particular beam that means this particular beam what i have it will become it will be subjected to a udl that is uniform distributed load and that load we need to apply on the beam and that load we apply in terms of frame loads we'll have because beam is a frame element so we'll be applying that on the frame element and that load usually we apply in terms of kilo newton per meter for every one meter how much kilo newton of the load is gonna come we have to calculate that we'll do certain manual calculations and then we'll try to apply the same load on the brickwork wherever it is required yeah so with this understanding we have got a very basic understanding similarly we have a parapet so these are called as parapet wall and on this particular beam again this parapet wall load will be acting so we have to calculate this load on the parapet wall like we do it for the brickwork and apply it on this particular beam we'll try to do all these things and the upcoming lectures so with this basic understanding i'll move to the etab software and now before we try to apply any load first we need to define those load to the etabs we need to tell etabs that see i'm applying a dead load and a live load and an earthquake load so that is why i'll go to the option called define i'll go to option called load patterns you have to go to the option called define let me do it again define 
go to the option called load patterns. So by default, ETAPS is considering two load. One is a dead load. The second is a live load, right? So we don't have to, uh, you know, give this loading again. It's by default, it's telling the load is dead. The type of the load is dead. The self-weight multiplier is one. And in the auto lateral load, you don't have anything here. Coming to the live load, again, it is live load. The type is live load. Self-weight multiplier is zero and auto lateral load is nothing here. Now I'll try to apply one more load that is called as SIDL load. SIDL, SIDL stands for superimposed dead load. Let me repeat it, superimposed dead load. And in the type, you have to say it is a super dead load. And then you don't have to give anything here, make it as zero and add a new load, right? Now three loads have been added here. Now the question is that, why do, we, why do we need to consider this as SIDL load? See, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to consider SIDL load. So this dead load itself will have the SIDL load. But for a better understanding, whatever is your beam, right? Let me make it for different color. Whatever beams I have, whatever columns I have, and whatever slabs I have, these people, the beam column and the slab will have the self weight, right? Right. If you put a beam, the beam is going to have, the beam will have its self weight. Right. Let us say I'm considering a beam of two meter length, which is having a dimension of 230 mm by 450 mm. Right. And let us say it is made up of uh, the density of this particular beam is, let us say, 20, the weight of the concrete is 24 kilonewton per cubic meter. So, based on this, you try to find the volume of this, that is two meter. We'll put in terms of mm, that is 2000 mm. We'll try to do that. Two meter comes out to be 2000 mm. Yeah, so this is two meter. So two meter multiply this by 230 is mm. I'll put in terms of meter 0 0.23 and 450 I'll put in terms of meter 0 0.45. If you try to multiply this, I'm going to get 2 into 0 0.23 into 0 0.45. I'm getting 0 0.207, 0 0.207. This is a cubic meter. Okay. And multiply this volume by the density of this particular concrete. It comes out to be 24. So I'm going to get the total weight, right? Because we know that density is equal to mass by volume. So I want to find my mass. Density is known to me. Volume is known with this formula. Can, can't you, uh, can you not find the mass of this particular concrete? I'm a particular uh, beam. It's very simple 0 0.207 into 25 is what I'm trying 24 is what I'm trying to do. So I'm getting 4.96. Let me put it as 5. Again, so it's cubic meter and this unit is in kilonewton per cubic meter. So this cubic meter and cubic meter is gone. So I'm left with 5 kilonewton. So 5 kilonewton is the self weight of this particular beam. In the same way, if I give you a column which says 230 by 450 is the size of a column having a length of let us say 3 meter. Can, can you not find the self weight of the uh, column? In the same way, if I give you a slab of having, let us say, the length of the slab is 4 meter, the width of the slab is also 4 meter, which is having a thickness of 0 0.15, which is 150 mm, and the density of that concrete is 24, can you not find the self weight of these things? And whatever self weight you find for all this material, they are considered as a dead load, right? But over that, whenever we have a slab, I'm going to put an extra load on that. Let us say I have a slab. On the slab, what I'm going to do, I'll put the tiles, right? So this tiles, or I'll be doing a flooring and over the flooring, I'll be putting the tiles or the granite or the marbles. So those loads, I'm putting it over the slab, over the slab. That is why it is called a superimposed dead load. So that is the reason I say, I'll, I'll define one more load pattern, which is called as SIDL, which is called a super dead. Now coming to this option called self weight multiplier. So that for the dead, it is mentioned one here, whereas for the live and SIDL, it is mentioned zero, right? So this one and zero is a computer language. One means yes, zero means no. If you are giving one here, so the, e the ETAP software knows that the dead load has to be calculated by the ETAP software. So we don't have to do this calculation what I taught you now. This calculation, the ETAP knows that because we already given the, the ETAP already know that the size of the beam, the length of the beam, the ETAPs know the dimensions of the beam from the section properties and the unit weight we already given it uh, while defining the materials that for the concrete it is 24 or 25 kilonewton for the steel it is 7850 so based on that ETAPs is smart enough to calculate the self weight of all the materials that is why it is one whereas coming to the live load and SIDL 
ETAPS doesn't do the calculation for the live load and for SIDL, we have to do it manually with the help of a code books that we have. That is for the live load. It is Indian Standard 875 Part 2. And for the SIDL, it is Indian Standard 875 Part 1. Based on that, we are going to calculate this load. So that is why it is written 1 here and 0 and 0 here. Right? Yeah. Once these things are done, you have to click on OK. Similarly, I'll tell you how to apply the earthquake load. And yeah, we are not going to do that as of now. If you want to add earthquake load, then we'll add EQ X because earthquake will happen in X direction and in Y direction. And here in the type, put it as seismic load, seismic load and self weight multiply is zero. Auto lateral load, I'll explain it after, after this. I'll add modify load. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I should have made it as, uh, let me control C. Wait, let me make it as, I'll cancel this. I'll go to define load patterns. By default two will come. I'll quickly do that. SIDL, let me say this is super dead and I'll say add new load, right? Now I'll say earthquake in X direction, earthquake in X direction. And let us say it is seismic and I'll say add new load. Now, similarly earthquake will happen in Y direction also. So I'll add earthquake in Y direction, right? And I'll say seismic and I'll say add new load. Similarly, let us say I'm, I want to add wind load. Let us say wind load in again, wind will add, act in X direction as well as in Y direction. And here it is not seismic. You have to consider wind here. And again, this is this will be zero. We'll come to this out a bit later. And I'll say add new load. Similarly, wind will act in Y direction. Y, this is wind, add new load. So once this thing's are done, that means I have added all the load patterns that is required, right? Now coming to earthquake in X direction, you can see something written here, auto lateral load. You don't have that options activated here, but from earthquake onwards, that option is activated. So if I click on this and if I go for modify load, yeah, I have to do in this way. Yeah. So here we have a lot of code books, whatever code books I explained to you here, right? I'll go back to that. Yeah, these are the different code books what we have. For the earthquake code book, what is the code book we have? We have Indian Standard 1893-2016 for earthquake resistant structures. And for the wind, what is the code book I have? Indian Standard 875 Part 3, 2015. Now concentrate here, it is 1893-2016. So I'll go back to this. And now, can you see that option here? 1893-2016. So this will help me. To, this will help the ETAP to identify which code book and from which code book I have to do my calculations. So I'll say 1893-2016 and give modify load here. Similarly for the earthquake in Y direction also it is the same thing. Click here, say 1893-2016 and modify load. Coming to the wind, wind load in X direction. Here for the wind we have a code book of Indian standard 875-2015, add new load. Uh, sorry, uh, modify the load and again for Y direction you have to click on Indian standard 875 2015 and modify load, right? In this way, we have to define the load patterns and this is how we try to give the code book. If you're from some other country, then based on your country code, no? American standard, the Chinese Euro code, Italian, based on that, you can try to uh, add the uh, add your code books and based on that, the ETAPs will calculate the result. Uh, so in some of your uh, system, since I'm using a 2018 version, I'm getting the code book as Indian standard 875 2015. Uh, in some of your code book and some of your ETAPs, since it's an older version, you don't get uh, Indian standard 875-2015. You might be getting the older version of that. You can take that as well. There's no much changes. Similarly, Indian standard 1893. Uh, yeah, where is the 1893? Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, if you come to the earthquake, we have Indian standard 1893-2016. Uh, in your in your particular ETAPs, you might be having Indian standard 1893-2002 code book because it got revised in 2016. So if you have a 2002 code book, you can click on 2002 as well. There's no issue with that, at least for practicing, right? You can try to do that. Yeah. So once you do this, you have to click OK. And once you do that, the ETAPs has understood that these are the load patterns that I need to consider. Based on that, the ETAPs will do the analysis and give us the result. So in the next lecture, we'll try to see how to apply those loads on the slabs and how to do certain manual calculations. I hope this is understood up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture.